Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. How many of you have deleted files accidentally? In fact, I think it'll probably be all of us have done it at some point. And sometimes they're easy to find, you just look in the recycle bin if you're using Windows, or you look in trash if you're using a Mac. Generally it's there and you can just simply ask it to restore. But what if you can't find it? What are you going to do? Well, there are places you can go to and software that you can get that can be quite expensive that you can use for scanning your computer and getting them back. If it's something that really has gone and you can't find it again, well, there are companies that deal with getting them back, but they're not cheap. So really good thing to remember in the first place is backup, backup, backup. If you don't have two copies, then you haven't got it at all. Make sure you've got two copies, particularly important documents, pictures, videos, things that you can't get back easily. So what would you do if you did delete something and you're having trouble finding it? Well, there is a good bit of free software out there called Recover, which is spelled R-E-C-U-V-A. And you could just Google it and find it, or you could go to their website, www.piriform.com. It's free, download it, install it, it's for Windows, and it runs through the steps of setting up and actually also how to recover a file. And it can be done, and a quick look at it now, if I was to just look over here, so basically it comes up with this recover wizard, and you can see there, you just simply have to click on next. Then, what you do is you then have to tell it what type of file it is you've lost. And if you're not sure, you just choose down at the bottom, other show all files. So really simple there, pictures, music, documents, video, compressed files, that's zipped files, emails, compressed is not just zipped files, there are others, but that is probably the most popular. Once you've done that, it wants to then know where you actually keep your files. And you may not know where you kept them, so you've got a choice of, I'm not sure, check everywhere, you might have it on a media card, that's a memory card, or iPod, in my documents, in the recycle bin, or you can specify a location. So once you've done things like that, once you've chosen it, and if, as I said, if you're not sure, you just say, I'm not sure, it'll now search for your files, and you can do something called a deep scan, which takes a little bit longer, and you can tick that box. Now what I do is I don't tick it yet, because if it doesn't come up finding anything, it will then say, do you want a deep scan? Or it would ask you if you found your file and if you wanted to do a deep scan. So once it's done that, it will then list any files if you've got any, and I've got one here. And now all I need to do is click on the ones I want to recover, then press recover. It now wants to know where I want to put it. I'm gonna put it in my documents, but probably a good idea is to actually choose my documents or wherever you want it and actually choose another folder to put it into. Once you've done that and you click on OK, but in my case, because I'm putting it on the same drive, it wants to, it's warning me that this may not be a chance of a successful recovery, but I'm gonna put it on the same drive anyway. It's worth a try, if not, and you have another drive, choose another drive then. And that's it, and then you can just go and have a look and you'll see that your file is actually in the right place. Now the problem is, is these things do work, but every now and again you're not going to find a file. So please do just back up, it's really, really important. And even if you're just like working on something, you don't have to run a whole backup process, just copy it onto a memory stick, or maybe even store it somewhere online. And I'm gonna be taking a look at where we can store things online in a podcast very, very soon. So that is Recover, R-E-C-U-V-A. Google it, go to the website, periform.com. Download it, always good to have on there. If you do need to recover files, do them as quickly as possible. Because if you have deleted them and then you carry on working, it's got less chance of actually recovering that file. So make sure you've already got that installed. So even if you think you're not gonna delete anything, get it now, it's a really good bit of software. And on to this week's app of the week. So this week is not so much app of the week, but some updates to some apps, which is Numbers, Pages, and Keynotes. They're the ones that Apple make. It's a spreadsheet, word processor, and PowerPoint presentation. And something that I've been waiting for is in Numbers to make it so that I can export it to Excel, and they have now done that. 
There are other improvements they've made. Also Keynote, you can now export to PowerPoints. This is really useful. So with these apps, you can actually import from Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and now you can export them as well. You can then email them, you can synchronize them with your computer, and also you can turn them into PDFs and send them on. So if I haven't mentioned those apps before, and I probably have, well worth getting an update on those, so check that out. And just one other one as well. If you're into Formula One, there is a great app on the iPad, which is Formula One Championship Timing, and they've reduced the price quite considerably because we're more than halfway through the season. And if you're in the UK, it was £19.99, it is now £9.99, and worth it. It's a really good app if you happen to be into that. So, on to this week's new tutorials. Well, this week I've added tutorials for Word on tabs. If you've been using tables, then tabs offers you an alternative and you can do some things with alignment there that might actually be easier than creating tables. Also, you can put in things known as leaders, like dot leaders as well. There's also one on how to change case. So if you've accidentally typed something in uppercase, how to switch to lowercase, title case, and also sentence case as well. There's also one toggle case as well. So if you accidentally had the caps lock pressed and you did like say a small G for Gary and then capital A, R and Y, you could easily just switch that around without having to retype everything. So they're the new tutorials that I've added this week and I'm going to keep adding more of them for you all the time. So just keep sending them through. So far on the website, there are more than 80 videos. So there's gotta be something there for you. Um, if not, drop me a line and hopefully I'll be able to sort it out. I can't actually reply to all of them personally. I do reply to some, as you can imagine, get quite a lot. So do send me a line and I will try and sort out a podcast for that too. Thanks for watching and see you next week and happy computing.